conversations here. So first takes, what do we think? I really enjoyed it. It was a little, oh, love it was a little rough at first, not gonna lie. <laughs> because I mean, you know, you jump in, you're literally butt ass naked. <laughs> Had to switch those settings real quick for the sake of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think it's okay, but yeah. anyway, I don't know. Maybe somebody in chat can tell me if that's actually allowed right now with TOS and everything. But, um, but yeah, I know you jump in, you're given a rock and a torch. Figure it out. <laughs> So that was a little rough at first. And then, you know, of course, people griefing and everything. But after a while, once we kind of got the hang of it, I was really enjoying it. I kind of didn't want to stop, but. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, the griefing and stuff. But I mean, I kind of expect that when it comes to these kind of games and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Definitely. And, yeah, when you say like, um, what was it? Just thrown in and just like, it's kind of rough at first. I'm like, yeah, it is. But at the same time, it makes whenever you accomplish something or get something set up that much more like fulfilling because you actually have to struggle through it and struggle in through it in a game. Yeah. So, I mean, I like that aspect of it. And I just like the building and like crafting and stuff like that with Rust. It's a, definitely a unique system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, it reminds me a lot of the crafting crafting system from Ark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, but Ark sucks, so. I mean that it, I'm gonna say this it, Ark is an overall game I think is fantastic I think the people who hate on Ark it's kind of like the same people who hate on Nickelback or hate on pineapple on pizza <laughs> just because the internet Nickelback. just because the internet tells you they suck doesn't mean they actually suck like oh, no I think Ark as the concept of the game was great like riding on dinosaurs and stuff like that and survival against them but then when it was implemented in the game it kind of fell flat <laughs> I think the only reason it fell flat, and I, of course this isn't an arc discussion, but I think the only, just a, a comment on that, I think the only reason it fell flat was because there wasn't enough community behind it at the time that it, there should have been. It's kind of, it's you know, the community was, there were so many other good games out at the time that it really made it difficult for that game to pop, and that's just my opinion. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, these are all opinions, so hold what you will. But, again, this is not an arc stream, this is a Rust uh, discussion. So, uh one thing i really enjoyed about the game was that it was like you it wasn't hard to navigate yeah. it wasn't difficult to like navigate the, the map or find where you were going like especially with the three of us yes we were in discord but it was super easy for us to go hey here's this on the map the topography shows that there's this little area and this little area i'm here and then, ta-da, we gr found each other. Grid coordinates were a huge lifesaver because we were just like, oh, we're yeah, at were. W23. And then we were just like, all right, everybody just converged there. Now, you say it's easy to navigate. I agree with you there. What's not easy is you're starving, literally. All the time. All the time. Like, you start off with yeah. a decent amount food of food. Food is the main problem. And it is hard to find food, especially when you don't know what you're looking for. I'm like, what is food? What can I eat? <laughs> like yeah i'm basically a child trying to figure out how the world works we got really lucky we got really lucky because we found like uh, when i first started when i was like, trying to look for y'all uh the dude who not the guy who owned the base but the guy who was helping him he and i were both uh like you know naked newbies running around <clears throat> and I, I i was starving and i asked the guy i was like hey can i get some food from you early on in the game the guy's like yeah here's some meat i've already cooked it go ahead and eat it and i was like my man and then we started getting shot at well he took off running and i took off running and then come to find out later on we find each other because he was uh, he asked me when i first met him he said what's your name i said joe and he said oh what up dude and i can't remember what his gamer tag is but we'll probably find him later because we're we literally set up shop right next to them but um he goes oh you know cool you know gives me his name gives me the food and everything and then we get shot at we take off running later on in the game when, before we found where we were gonna put up shop this dude comes running up to me again <clears throat> and he goes hey man and i was like oh please don't kill me please don't kill me who are you and he goes you're joe right and i was like <laughs> what <laughs> and then like, i was like oh shit stream sniping and, what <laughs> right and uh but then he he ran over and like and, and you know let us set up shop right next door which was dope because yeah. it gave us that extra layer of 
of help, like an extra, extra layer of protection in case, you know, we were getting raided and they were there because the dude who owns that base is loaded. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loaded. But he's not like just now, handing things out like to like, you know, he's just like, yeah, set up shop. This is how you do things like he's helping us learn the game, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I and I, little, I think the only the only handout that I really got from him was like at the very end <clears throat> when cloth. we needed to close up the stream. And I was like, yeah. hey, man, do you have any cloth? Because I need to save this game so I can hop off. And he was like, yeah, here. And he was like, you can have this. I got a shit ton of uh, more in the in the uh, in my base. And I'm like, cool. OK. Yeah, it works. Speak speaking of that the proudest moment of that night was when we were able to finally make our sleeping bags and be like yeah. great i don't have to spawn all over the fucking map oh yeah because if you don't have a sleeping bag down if for those that might not know like you when you die you respawn but you can respawn anywhere <laughs> and so there were Literally. times that we spawned on the complete opposite side of the map and it would have taken about probably 15 20 minutes to walk there and that's hoping we survived both you know starvation being shot at uh, there are bears and wolves and boars and everything that will kill you. Yeah, like, I mean, there's, there's a lot of adversity twice. from the start line to the finish line, which is not fun. But yeah, that, I mean, that they pretty much encompass what a survival game is supposed to encompass. Yeah. You're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So I have no qualms on that front. And that's part of the fun is, you know, first getting to learn, you know, what you need to do to survive, you know, how to finally get, you know, reliable sources of food and water. And then, you know, for, fortunately, Rust has a very large upgrade path that we honestly haven't touched that much, <laughs> but we got the basics. Well, out. one thing I want to say, and I was actually uh, pulling up some things within Steam uh, to have this discussion as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the very first comments is it. it I want to preface by saying I had a great time playing the game. Yeah. I had a phenomenal time playing the game, but this comment sums up 90% of my time on that game. Boiling pit of toxic preteens, power tripping on harassing less dedicated players. It's all right if you got some friends to play with who are into it. You you really struggled with that. Like, that was hilarious, honestly. Uh, so let me, let me explain, let me explain from my perspective. Because of course on the stream, all you can see is Sam's perspective. Uh, you can't see mine, you can't see Anderson's. And also last night we actually introduced Sugar live mm -hmm. finally um so yeah, just it, popped in. he was just like oh y'all playing that i bet yeah it was, <laughs> yeah. It was fun it was fun it, it was awesome to have him in um but i'm i'm gonna tell you straight up that i the entire time all i was trying to do was find food to survive to get back to w23 so that way i could actually get to our base and help that was it I wasn't scavenging for tools. I wasn't scavenging for wood. I was just looking for food so I could survive the trip back and over and over and over again. I ran into people, uh, littler people who I would hear, Hey man, Hey, yeah, I'll help you. Bang. <laughs> and then they would loot my body the best for nothing the, yeah the best part was for when nothing. you snapped though oh yeah it was great you you snapped <laughs> at, at which point please tell me at which point because oh. i feel like i snapped a couple times oh God. No, i'm talking about like the ultimate snap the dude that are you got... talking about the dude who fell in the pit yeah exactly oh okay let me explain that real yeah. quick so for those this, who didn't watch this was, this was hilarious so I, at this point, had probably died, I want to say, at easily 15 times to just randoms. Now, keep in mind, I do want to say this. I, there were people in the game who were awesome. There was one dude, I was actually, I, I was super thirsty in game. I needed to find water. I see this water trough, and I'm like, let me get some water real quick. And I didn't realize the fact at this point, I didn't know that if you see a water trough set up, that is something that someone made and put there and filled it with water that they worked on themselves to make sure it was there. So I ran up and I'm like, oh, thank goodness. I'm getting some water, getting some water. Finally able to survive again. And all of a sudden I hear in my left ear, all I hear is, hey. <laughs> you sipping on our water, boy? And I just turn <laughs> my character and look. And there's a double barrel shotgun aimed right in my eyes. <laughs> and I was just like, 
I just wanted that high quality H two O. And he goes, he goes, what are you Gatorade. doing? I was, he legit asked me, he goes, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just genuinely trying to survive. I'm naked. I have a rock and a torch. I'm trying to get back to my friends. We're literally learning the game. I just want to survive. I'm sorry if I stole your water. He goes, hey, no problem. Thank you for being honest. And then he goes, here, here's a bone knife. That way you can at least have some pr- sort of protection. He goes, and here's some meat. That way you can eat that on the way because I know you're going to uh, die of starvation if you don't. I was like, thank you. Nice. Thank you so much. It's kind of funny because in a game with this much toxicity is when you're honest, you actually get like good responses like, oh, he was it. A- <laughs> Wait, you're not going to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> Anderson, you good? No, someone's apparently someone with a double muffler on their truck just started up right outside my window and vibrated the glass. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, okay, that's where you're doing it. Eight See, o'clock at night. I thought he was just being dramatic. Explain, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I did too. That's why I saw him go like, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it explain. worked well, but no, it was the truck outside that just rattled my fucking window. It's good timing. Good lord. Yes. Yeah, it's fair. Uh, to explain what Sam was talking about <clears throat> at the point in time when I finally got back to the base I died about 15 times uh, either to starvation to dehydration to which was only a couple of those uh, to toxic 10 year olds uh, which was a large majority uh, to a guy who just kept shooting me with flaming arrows because he just wanted to shoot me with flaming arrows um, so when I finally get back I've got my bone knife I've got my torch and I got a rock and that's it. And I, my sole purpose at this very moment is to find cloth. Cause I've got to make a sleeping bag so we can save the game. Like, so that way I can put it down. And when I load back in, I'll be at our base. Well, the base next door to us, the guy built it in such a way that the walls are just high enough. And he's got multiple sections around his base for people to fall in. You kind of cut out during that. You kind of cut out during that, like your your connection froze. Um, Uh, The last part we heard was uh, built the hall. The walls just high enough. Okay, so he built the walls just high enough to where you couldn't jump out. And he has pits all around his base, like around the the core walls of his base, so that way if you fall in, you're stuck. You're going to die of starvation. You're going to die of dehydration. He's going to come mine your body for whatever you got. And it's honestly genius. It's genius the way he has it up. I kind of want to implement that in our base now. Yeah. Well, this guy, I run up to go ask the guy who owns a base if he has cloth. And I run, I see a dude on his roof, and I'm like, I'm thinking it's him. So I run, like, yo, dude. And that's when I realized it ain't him. And the guy on his roof was trying to break in to steal his stuff. And the dude gets spooked and runs, jumps, and doesn't clear the wall and falls in one of the pits. <laughs> and so I look down at him and I'm like, hey, buddy. He goes, uh, is this yours? I said, nope, I'm his bodyguard. <laughs> and he goes, he was like, oh, 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 okay. And uh, he's like, can you help me get out of here? I'm like, what you doing around here? He's like, uh, I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm like, okay, you can get, get out for a while. And he goes, <laughs> what do you need i was like i need cloth you got any cloth he goes i got hemp seeds i was like great throw them up here he tries to throw them can't clear the wall the dude who owns the base runs up he goes what's going on i was like oh you got a guy trapped right here i'm just you know talking to him keeping him company and he goes oh damn he goes let me build a ladder real quick builds the ladder and while he's doing this i'm still talking to this guy sam runs up and he's like, what's going on? I was like, oh, there's a dude trapped right here. The dude who owns the base throws the ladder down. I was like, hey, let me help you with that. I jumped down, shank him, <laughs> and just dropped him right there. And, and the, the guy who owned the base was like, bro, that's savage, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care. At that point, I was like, I, I need some redemption. And that, that dude was just the wrong place at the wrong time. But the best part this about this. Went full insanity. The, so the, but the best part, so like, that's hilarious. But the best part, at least from my perspective, was uh, I'm still sitting up top watching him as he's shanking him. And then I hear the dude go, oh, dude, that's savage. What are you doing? And then I just see you turn around. And by the way, when you're talking with uh, like the in-game chat, like proximity chat kind of stuff, 
uh, your mouth is actually moving in the game. And yep. so, uh, like, he turns around, and so it's just like, I've been killed too many damn times by these 10-year-olds. I'm tired of this. I just need to get one. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'm just, I, I was so done. I was, oh, I my was, God. I was like, really I was were. Done. Joe's officially snapped. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the worst part is because I got I got hit by the same like ten year olds or whatnot, and when they actually killed me and they tried to play with me and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure I scared the one that killed me because he was just like I, I didn't mean you to take it so personally. I was like, do it, pussy, fucking kill me. <laughs> he was just like, uh, uh, what do you mean? I was like, do it, you fucking pussy. What your mom didn't birth you with enough balls? Do it. And he legit got God. fucking scared. <laughs> He's going to his mom afterwards, like, Mom, what's a pussy? I'm pretty sure I just ruined that kid's night. Nah, if he's been playing uh, Rust for a while, he's he's already far, like, you know, too far yeah, gone. Yeah, he's probably already ruined, yeah. yeah. This is an interesting uh, uh, comment that I'm seeing on Steam here. Are you <laughs> looking at, like, the reviews? Yeah, I'm looking at the reviews. Uh, this person's played 221 hours. Jesus and uh the review says a fun game but the grind is not either play vanilla and farm for 10 hours or play on a higher resource game server and have everyone love on you with ak's uh oh not love sorry i read that wrong have everyone shit on you with ak's <laughs> you have a pistol uh well, all shit. i saw were hearts it's basically the same thing <laughs> all i saw were hearts um have everyone shit on you with ak's when you have a pistol Better yet, you will always meet those 5,000 hour cuck lords who play this game as their daily job to make sure nobody touches their base. Damn. Which I feel I mean, like we ran into a lot. I mean, yeah, but that's kind of what you signed up for. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the thing about the game, the game is fantastic. The game, I, I love the mechanics of the game. I think it's great all around. Um, the true survival nature of it really, really does resonate really well within the game. Um, I just, like, just like any other game, if you're going to play it, understand there are tryhards out there and there are 10 year olds out there who are going to ruin your day. Well, you can even see that, like, um, so part of what's kind of made Rust popular again is there's this new, like, content creator server and so basically like all the big streamers and youtubers are on this and they basically created their own private server with like with help from the developers to kind of set their own narrative and kind of try to address the toxicity and the griefing and everything like that yeah um, they honestly just role play on that server yeah now have you guys seen um basically all the drama that was happening for the first server with that Oh yeah, because uh, when they first brought it up, uh, mm -hmm. because I was watching it through uh, Jacksepticeye's stream mm -hmm. and uh, Moist Critical stream, uh, they when they were first trying to bring it up, it kept getting DDoSed and like cyber attacked because mm -hmm. well, there's assholes out there. There's assholes who are going to do asshole things. Yep. And then after that, there was a uh, when they finally got up and they were actually role playing and actually doing content and stuff like that. That. The, there was two players in there that were uh, just doing as in what is known as the Rust General and just killing anyone on site. Yeah, and I, I and think that's that was, that server was and I think that was like XQC and a couple and a couple other people, but because I remember there was like this whole like big drama about it, and so but oh, there yeah. so there's at least paths for that. But <laughs> if you want to have like a true, I don't know about true, but like as close to a true like Rust experience as you know to be to make the game repeatedly playable. Is that something that you would need is like a custom server like that or do you think you'd just be all, all right with doing like official or community servers i feel like if you want to have like what they have a role-playing server or something like that then yes you do need probably a dedicated service to that or de at least a dedicated channel to focusing on role-playing and just i don't know enjoying the enjoying the community aspect of the game yeah because i mean if you're going to a general server or anything like that you're just going to have general people in there mm -hmm. so you're going to just get people that either play the game for themselves play the game to be with friends or and not really communicate with anyone outside of that other than they see them they kill them because they're infringing on their time their time their place and their base and stuff like that so yeah if you want to i would say you would have to have a separate server for if you want to have a different 
objective or overall gameplay than what Russ is meant for. Yeah. Yeah, to piggyback off of that, I think the biggest thing to to recognize going into playing this is it's just like any server-based game where if you want to have an experience where you can go in and genuinely experience a game for the survival aspect of it, go in and farm, go in and hunt, go in and build, go in and, you know, what you know, whatever, then a dedicated server is probably what you're going to need because if you don't if if you don't do that, if you go into a general server or a custom server whatever it is where there's a good amount of people, that you're going to end up being raided you're going to end up in fights you're going to end up being killed repetitively it, uh or repetitiously rather where it's going to be you know just a constant fight to stay alive now some people would say that's part of the actual game mechanics where it's a fight to stay alive mm -hmm. and from my perspective yeah that's actually a really big mechanic of it because it's a world it's it's essentially you're just playing other people and hoping you can survive the longest yeah. um but you know uh, I, I think for the sake of what we did last night i think that us jumping into that server was good because it gave us a good well-rounded uh perspective of the survival aspect and what it looks like with other people in that world no yeah. matter how much i hated playing those 10 year olds or not you know it did it did give that perspective well and that yeah, also that I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead no, you got it. You got it. Uh, well, I would also say when it comes to games like this and stuff, you got to remember, it's just a game. Yeah. Don't let it get to you. I mean, yeah, you're going to get griefed and stuff like that because, I mean, you're going to have, you're inevitably going to have those kind of people that come in and just want to spawn kill or anything like that. But at the end of it all, it's just a game. You're just coming in to have some fun with the boys and just, just relax and have fun. If you get killed, you get killed. I mean, try your best to play the game as it is and, I guess achieve it to a point where at least you can reset back to an optimal point but i mean at the end of it all it's just like well that's how this game was made some people take advantage of it some people play it a different way it's just i mean you're fighting with a bunch of players from around the world so yeah i don't i don't like to take it too seriously yeah and uh, to expand on that though so when you look at so to bring arc back up for just a second so you see arc is a little bit more pv oriented now you can do pvp with like servers and everything like that but so arc has a lot more of like a pve element to it do you think rust would benefit from having something like that or do you think it should remain the same i think it should remain the same yeah yeah because i mean yeah you could have pve i mean okay yeah it works for some games but rust especially since how it is now it's primarily pvp and just it kind of really is well no, there, I would there say are some pve PvP. elements to it like you know like the attack choppers going around and i think there's like uh like later on into it there's like scientists with like machine guns that will kill you for some reason uh, yeah. i don't know i haven't really explored into like any of the lore or, you know <clears throat> anything beyond what we've done but so there is some mm -hmm. to it. Do you think they should expand on that at all for the people that want to be able to play us, but don't necessarily want to get griefed by a 10 year old every five minutes? <laughs> Honestly, I would say if they want to expand on it, it'd be great for rust and everything like that. But if they do, they should probably create a different server list for PV more specific specialized PVE yeah. environments. Well, what I'm saying is to, because arc, you can play all by yourself. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to have a bunch of people on there. So like, because uh, Rust, as of right now, you have to connect to a server. What if you just had the game installed onto your computer and you were just able to play it by yourself? Just ha have a little bit more PvE aspects to it. I don't think there's enough in the game for it to really... Yeah, and, and I agree for, that... For the constant PvE. Yeah, and so that's why I'm saying like they would definitely need to rework it a little bit. But, you know, I think the core... Because, I mean, to me, like, like you were saying, it reminds me a lot of Ark and but it's just more pvp focused and so i think if they had tweaked yeah. it a little bit that would kind of help out either you know your the people that don't have friends or people that just don't like pvp as well so that way you can expand yeah, your, I, your market audience well, well that's what i was saying earlier was like <clears throat> you you know if you want to have a pve experience where you're kind of just you against the world mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. Then yeah, you know, go in and make a uh, your own dedicated server and and jump into a PVE. 
you're probably gonna fight some warthogs you're probably gonna try and chase down some chickens you're probably gonna end up you know getting shot at by whatever ai was in within the game at some point because we really didn't explore a large portion of that there's north side of the map that we never touched yeah so we don't even know what's up there um so i mean as far as the pve side of things i don't i from what we saw last night Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's enough in the game to have a proper PVE experience. Yeah. Uh, because at some point you have to have the environment fighting back. Mm -hmm. And the only real experience we had of that was literally warthogs trying to kill us. No, it's the fucking wolves. Oh, and fucking the wolves. wolves. And the wolves. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Took me out twice. That's really it. Well, and the dehydration and the starving. Because that is technically part of the environment. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that that's fair, but yeah. I, I mean I think Rust is built. Uh, I, I think that it. So I think the way Rust is built right now as a PvP style game is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, you get the most out of your. Uh, you get the most bang for your buck out of that. Uh, you're going to get the most enjoyment or frustration out of that. Um, if they decide to go in and add other elements uh, within the game, like other animals that could kill you um other elements that really make it lively like so you know again this is kind of like a, a rust versus arc situation here in arc you literally have dinosaurs that could kill you like your job your sole job is to survive against everything yeah and there are such an, a huge array of dinosaurs that can kill you Whereas in Rust, there really isn't, at least from what we saw, there really isn't that many, you know, elements of animals that can kill you. We only really saw two. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, uh, like, for instance, I think it'd be cool, like, maybe add sharks or something in the water. Like, when we were going swimming for those uh, rafts to yeah. get uh, stuff off of them because they had some pretty mm -hmm. high-tier loot out there. Like, yeah, if you're swimming out there, good luck. Because there might be a shark just looming underneath of you that could come get you. That'd be cool. It would be dope. Mm -hmm. But I, I think for the sake of where it is right now, I mean, I think it's built very well. I just think that they would need to do a, a bit more reworking and add a few more elements of animals uh, to the game uh, to really give you a full PVE experience. Yeah, or it doesn't necessarily have to be animals. Because like the, the other game that it reminds me of, I don't know if you guys ever played it as Seven Days to Die oh yeah um briefly so, so yeah it's similar i mean so seven days to die is a little bit more kind of like cube based like it's a little bit closer to minecraft but that one's got yeah. that one's got zombies in it and so like you got zombies there dinosaurs for arc like i guess if they did rework it i mean yeah i guess you could just have normal ass animals but <laughs> i mean like, Russ, i mean Russ kind of does already have normal normal animals because they have the wolves the warthogs yeah, the bear, and, yeah no. and they also have the uh enemy copters and enemy uh uh what is it called ais and stuff like that they do have that in that we just didn't run across any of it yeah so like it, maybe if they just like turned up the spawn rate on that that could work I don't know. I'm just, that's just, I'm speaking. I mean, yeah, just... I could, I could see both ways on that one, but at the same time, it's like, if you mm -hmm. turn that up, then you got to, then you, that means you turn up the player having to survive against that and the other players. So it's just like, it's, I guess it's kind of a balance issue at that point. Yeah. Well, it doesn't well, necessarily have to thing... be. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that across all of rust. I mean, like you can do that in like a single player component and then online, all that's turned down. So like, I mean, yeah. you know, you, cause I mean, I'm sure that's a factor that, that like a slider almost, you know, <laughs> like how many do yeah, we spot? Sure. <laughs> no, one thing I do wish they would do <clears throat> if you're going to turn up the spawn rate of anything is actually turn up the spawn rate of the animals. Um, because I feel like for the variety of what's there, at least from what I saw, it was really freaking hard to find animals to kill to actually get food. Yeah, like yeah, it was really sparse. And then even when you found them, they were significantly faster, <laughs> so you yeah. couldn't catch them. Exactly, exactly. Like I remember uh, at one point I had found like I um, looted a crossbow off to one of those rafts. And I had five arrows, and uh, Anderson, myself, and Sugar were running. We're all starving. There's a deer, and we're trying to chase it down. And this thing, like, turns into the flash and just takes off over the hill. <laughs> Disappeared. Gone. 
And it's like, I feel like there should, like, if you see one deer, you sh- you probably would see, like, three or four others with it. Like, because that's more real-world perspective is, like, you'll see a uh, a pack of them or, like, a pack of wolves or, uh, you know, warthog, which have been singular animals, maybe one or two in the same area. But I feel like they just didn't have enough animal, you know, respawn to go go around everyone animal animal representation (laughs) yeah basically and then that that also that also comes to the game as well which now that i just think about it is that's part of probably why a lot of people just straight up kill you and don't help you because me you can you can also (laughs) go cannibal and eat human meat you can eat humans yeah it's a bit gross but yeah but i mean it's a thing and it heals you up quick like Hmm. I was about to say shit. That's what I did, and I had no shame. Yeah. I was just like, "Oh yeah, I found body parts. All right, where's my... I'm going to make a fire?" And now. at one point, you would kill like you were about to die, and so you just jumped on the fire <laughs> and killed yourself, oh, yeah. and then harvested <laughs> yourself, like... and then we ate you. Like it was weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. I think I even brought that up in stream. I was like, you know what's weird is that I'm eating myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How'd that make you feel, Anderson? It made me feel full because I had back, I had energy back, so I was fine with it. I was like, more quandaries aside, I'm tr- out here f- fighting for my motherfucking life, so I'm gonna eat me. Eh. <laughs> now, I will also say uh, was something I really enjoyed about the games uh, of the game itself is you do get achievements pretty fast. Like uh, overall, when you when you look at what you're completing and such, like there are achievements in there for just about everything you can do which I think is really cool. It gives you more of a uh, fulfillment to continue playing because I mean, I, that's one of those games where like you have to be dedicated to wanting to play a survival game to really enjoy that game. And if you are someone who's driven by being able to go like 100% a game, this is definitely one of those games where it's going to keep you fulfilled to keep moving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially with the building, with the building and the uh, crafting elements as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, indeed. Yeah, because well, I mean, if you look at it like that, uh, it's it, it it's the same as like getting into a game like uh, Seven Days to Die or Daisy or Arma. It's just like you got to be committed to actually want to go somewhere far in those games. Yeah, yeah. I played a shit ton of Daisy back in the day, like before it went standalone and everything. Oh and yeah, I was a, I was an armor guy, so yeah, it was yeah. always just so rough when you finally got up to the Northwest Airfield. You know, you get some good loot. Then somebody else that's been playing the game for 5,000 hours, you know, being a cuck lord, as the mm-hmm. comment said earlier, <laughs> snipes you from across the fucking map, and then you spawn back, you know, like Electro or, uh, or Cherno, <laughs> and then you have to walk all the way back. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. like, when I was in Arma, like, you would be running a mission with some friends and stuff like that, just doing it, like, old school style with your equipment and everything, mm-hmm. and then some massive motherfucker comes in with a fucking M1 A1 Abrams and yeah. just fucking blasts you. It's just like... <laughs> All right. Now, I, I, I do wish, because uh, now tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, there really isn't any uh, survival based games that have come out in the past year. Like, not, not, I don't know not popular ones. I'm sure there's plenty on the Steam Marketplace, but. I think, I, I feel like there, Rust is a good template to use um, to, you know, move forward in that progression uh and make one you know current um yeah because that game came out originally i think 2013. yeah most uh, most most of the big tenders for like the survival or the pvp market is like i mean when they whenever they come out they have to compete with arma daisy rust and um seven days to die so there's not really much of a market for it since those four kind of swallowed it up yeah yeah i see the the version of rust that we downloaded off of steam came out february 8th 2018. yeah so that's the full release at first uh so i'm on the wikipedia page now uh it was first released in december 2013 to the steam early access program for 2013 yeah. it looks really good yeah because i played that i played rust in the beta f- version be- way before any yeah. of the other ones and honestly i'll probably hop on after we're done you know streaming to play some more because I enjoyed the experience and I want to be able to, you know, navigate a bit more and see what's up. But, um, 
Because, I mean, there really is a, a lot more to do, like you were saying earlier, you know, helicopters, uh, vehicles. Like, I found a truck that all we had to do was put parts in it, and, you know, we have a movable vehicle, you know. All we had it's... to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, got flashbacks. Do I've got flashbacks of Daisy right now. Like, <laughs> finding some yeah. of those components were hard. Same. It's like all you had to do was get a recon scope and armor for your yeah. rifle. It's like, yeah, you know well, how hard that fucking is to do. But there's even there's even the element of like if you want to just ride a horseback, you know that there's uh, there's this place called the ranch where uh, if you have enough scrap metal, you can go up and buy a saddle and then choose a horse and it's yours. Yeah, but then and... you gotta also consider getting that scrap metal because you are foraging for days. Well, I mean, that also, uh, that, that comes down to going where you need to go to find it. Like, I, I was finding a lot of scrap metal in, uh, like, on those rafts. Uh, I was finding scrap metal. I was finding scrap metal in the harbor. Uh, but also, mm -hmm. a lot of the places you go to find the scrap metal, there's good pretty, people there waiting. I was about on. to say, it's pretty fucking dangerous. Yeah. Like, I, there's even one, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know this until I died to it. There's an element of radiation where, like, if there's certain oh, yeah. areas that have radiation po uh, or radiation uh, levels that are poisonous and if you stay there too long you'll die like in the radiation poisoning hurts like i'm so i'm talking like i had i was standing in radiation hitting a uh a barrel to get scrap metal out of it and by the time i finished hitting the barrel i didn't realize this but my radiation was at 150 seconds cooldown and i only had 50 health and i'm like i'm not surviving this <laughs> and every second was another two uh two notch or five notch off your health and i'm like that's it i'm done yeah like, like you also got the hot and cold mechanic as well like if you're too hot you lose health if you're too cold you lose health it's just like yeah you're actually fighting the elements and stuff in this game so yeah yep. yep. as a side note i do have uh anti-radiation pills on my body so good to know <laughs> <laughs> i would i would love to i'm probably going to hop into it sometime this week if not tonight and start like working on doing weapons and armor and stuff like that yeah yeah because we'll definitely be running uh actual challenges on that game uh for y'all in the future oh yeah mm -hmm. probably this Especially saturday well, probably, <laughs> yeah probably this saturday you know yeah. foreshadowing tune in to the stream uh, 8 p.m eastern time 7 p.m central shameless plug they... shameless. um anybody uh anybody drop anything in the chat nope well damn y'all <laughs> Yeah, this is this also we're answering questions as well from our per, uh, first take. So if anybody's out there wanting to throw them in, by all means, Sam will read them out and we'll definitely go over them. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're say, watching the uh, rewind as well, I mean, post them in the comments and we'll try to respond as soon as we can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, now that's one thing uh, with with this. Uh, there's a lot that could be done as far as elements of the game. I think now that it's really having a a, a surge, kind of like Among Us did. Uh, I think now that's having a surge, you know, the developers are going to probably try and do some new things to it to liven it up. But oh yeah, um, because Russ has always had like a cult following, but now it's getting more mainstream than it did back in the day. So mm -hmm. they're probably going to yeah. liven it up here real quick. Oh yeah, and and that's the thing is, um, it would it would be it really would be dumb of them not to with how big it's getting right now. Like I know when Among Us drops a new map, Among Us is going to pop off again. Uh, cause they're going to have new mechanics to it. So it's like, you know, the same thing with rust, you know, might as well go ahead and start beefing it up even more because people are going to play it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah I, don't, I, I would say they would probably beefing it up, but they probably also expand its capabilities to fit more people coming in. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Any other thoughts from y'all? Uh, good game. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Yeah. Nine out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll give it an eight out of ten if it wasn't for all the uh, sweat lords and stuff in there. But I mean, that's just that's just what comes along with this kind of gameplay. So I'm like, yeah, it's an eight out of ten game. Would I like to see some improvements? Yes, but I mean, yeah, I'm hoping for them. But at the same time, like I recognize what the game is and what it's been made for. So I'm happy enough with it, what it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely personally give it a, a nine out of ten. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna agree with Anderson. The only reason that I don't give it a 10 out of 10 is because of the sweat lords. Um, uh, you know, overall, I honestly, there's, there's few games that I play that really make me go, I want to keep playing this. Like, I, I don't want to mm -hmm. hop off. And like, realistically, the only reason I wanted to hop off last night was because I was still in Texas and, you know, wanted to kick it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're not but, 
yeah and that's the thing is you know th but it was one of those games where i was like the the three hours that we played it went by like quick yeah and right. it was one of those games where i genuinely felt like you know what i don't want to stop playing this i'm having even though i'm dying i'm having fun i'm genuinely having fun with it so i i give it a nine out of ten for sure i do i do genuinely wish that you know we could get away from the sweat lords but that's just me that's not gonna happen. i mean it's, it's, it's <laughs> just the game, so yeah i mean yeah. they they do have like ways to try to mitigate that where they do like server wipes every now and then so that way everybody starts back fresh so it's not like you know like years and years of accumulating stuff but you know yeah. they're, they're still going to be there playing yeah. 24 hours a day you know getting up to you know max stuff really fucking quick <laughs> yep yeah, and if you if you have like a custom server that you've been invited to or anything like that, you will run into someone who's been accumulating for years. So yeah, I mean, it's just it comes along with being a server based game. Well, that's that's uh, that's one thing I'll say. You know, like with our server that we're in right now, uh, which if you want to join in and have some fun with TGB, uh, we are in what Face Punch Five was it? Face Punch Five US West. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, don't go into EUS because it does not work as well. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, playing playing in that server, uh, I did see where that server gets wiped on the first Thursday of every month. So you know that definitely helps. Like you said, it helps mitigate uh, a lot of the uh, the sweats. You know, and and everyone kind of goes restarts at an even kill. Uh, I mean, it. it, it, it it eliminates the sweat until everybody comes in after that wipe and is like, oh shit, now yeah. I gotta start back <laughs> over again. Yeah. So you know that server is popping off on that Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, one thing we never found out was what that loud, like, foghorn sound was. Oh yeah. When it was going off. We never found that out. I don't think I want to find out. I think I'll just <laughs> leave that as a mystery. I kind of want to know, like, I, but I don't want to be in the vicinity if it's a bomb. I'm pretty sure it's either a bomb or some like something that will kill you. So I'm just like, you know what? We'll let it be a mystery. And if I run across it, great. If I don't, great. Or it could be like a supply ship that you have to like go out and raid, which that would oh, be dope. There, there are there are ammo. Uh, what was it supply crates and, and drops and stuff like that? Yep. So and possibility. As Joe found out, there are boats that you can take. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Guess what happened on that one? Insert ten year old here. <laughs> uh you know I, and i know it's probably me just being picky uh there is one mechanic i wish they would really insert for people who have stupid humor like myself i love that when you spawn into that game as a brand new player and you're running around foraging for food uh you know looking for water trying to get wood to build your base and such as you run around, they need to have a dick slapping sound <laughs> of your wiener hitting your legs as you're running. Cause that would be hilarious. They need to have that or like a titty flopping sound, just like blah 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 blah. <laughs> if they have that, then yeah, I would be I'd be down with that. It's be like, I'm on my way downtown, titties out, dick slinging all around the place. <laughs> Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Smack, smack. I don't know if I can read. No, I'm not going to try. I was going to like slap my leg or something like that. <laughs> but it's not going to pick up on the mic. Good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the game, the game overall, really good. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to hop on tonight and see what I can find. I'm actually watching these like playthrough videos like on Steam, the, kind of, the, the trailers and such. Hmm. And there's an insane amount of things that you can do that I'm seeing here. Like, yeah. it, like we barely scratched the surface with oh, what we were yeah. doing. I want to get a oh, helicopter. Yeah, Helicopters look dope. <laughs> true. It is true. That is also something I would like to find out. Because uh, a lot of the places that have helicopters are bases that people have made where they have their helicopters. Yeah. And I, I'm curious if there's a way you can actually pick locks. Like, if you can... You can like, blow them up. Well, I know that, but I'm saying like it, it, in the earlier stages, like if you can, like even with the ones that had like the shock factor on it, like could you pick that lock or like rewire or something? I don't like, think I'm curious so. if that's a mechanic. I, I, I don't think so. I think that's why raids are such a big thing in Rust because you usually just got to blow the shit up. Yeah. And that's why people have such like, yeah. you know, massive 
fortresses like typically like the actual like usable space inside is teeny tiny but like all of it is just like redundancy like you know yeah, just like layers to try to stuff. reinforce everything well Which there's one thing i want to do like there was one i found where it was literally like you saw the base and then there was another layer of base around it and then there was a fortified wall around that yeah. and i and like like they they built it in layers so that way no one could get to it easily mm-hmm. like if the, if a raid takes place no one's gonna blow a wall and then run right inside they're gonna have to blow a wall blow a wall and then blow another wall and then get inside like it's it was it was pretty intense seeing yeah it. that's that's one of the common uh you can see one of the common things in rest to do is like to double stack the uh, entrance door triple stack it even and like have it in a triangle formation so where you open one door you can't open the other door without closing the other door and stuff like that effectively locking yourself in there yeah exactly. so yeah there's definitely strats and stuff for that yep well for any viewers out there if y'all want to hop on pop on with us tonight come find us in the face punch five west us west server because it'll be fun yep I probably won't be there. Look, but. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get dinner first myself, so I'll see how I feel after that. That's fair. That, that's definitely fair. But yeah. uh, anybody out there nope. throwing any fun verbiage? No. Well, like we said, if you're watching this on the rewind, uh, drop your comments down below on what you think of Rust. Uh, come find us and uh we'll have some fun yeah and definitely join our discord server so that way you know because we'll probably post you know when we're getting on and everything like that so people can hop in and join and either grief us or Mm -hmm. join us one of the two (laughs) yep and tune in saturdays at 8 p.m eastern time for our challenge podcast and tune in sunday 8 p.m eastern time for our podcast podcast i don't know what we call it whatever and then you get the reviews and rewinds on monday and friday Good job. Challenge Good job. podcast. Uh, yes, yes. I thought the challenge. Uh, podcast, I said challenge podcast on Saturday. I, I think you're. Isn't it Saturday? Yeah. No, you're right. One hundred percent. Just I don't know if I'd call it a challenge podcast. I think I just call it the challenge. Okay. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> also if you play Rocket League, we have our very first challenge series tournament coming up next month. Signups end this week february 5th wait wait, wait, when's february 5th uh not this week next week next week february 5th (laughs) so yeah so let us know uh you can hit us up in the discord you can hit us up on youtube and the comments you can hit us up on instagram or facebook uh, or even twitter if you want to join and you got a team of three uh you and two others uh, hop in it is free to join it is a 150 dollars prize purse right now that you can spend through amazon uh and uh, as a team uh and it's gonna be a lot of fun so hop in on that uh we've got signups happening right now we've got teams filling up so you definitely want to get in as soon as possible Right oh, no. Fuck you. We're not your mother. <laughs> <laughs> On that note.